Disgraceful. Shocking. Completely immoral, revolting, and outrageous. I tell you, we're fast going to hell in a handbasket when it can happen right on the lawn of the White House. It was one of those damn fool teas for teenagers the first lady's always giving. For daughters of important men. That means money men. It was a beautiful day in Washington. A bit more windy than usual. In fact, one could almost say that nature played its part in what was about to happen. And what was about to happen was Bunny O'Hara. Deadly, a walking landmine ready to explode at the first touch. The first time the girl was ever let loose on her own. I still say it was a dirty commie plot arranged by enemy agents to destroy us. Caught everybody by surprise. Made a shambles of our whole military machine. than the sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. Completely demoralizing. Started with just a second lieutenant and a little puff of wind. But in only one year, that young vixen had worked her way up through the ranks like a hurricane. from lieutenant to captain. From captain to major. To colonel. Brigadier General. <laughs> to Major General. To General. It's a national emergency. We've got to do something before she completely destroys the Pentagon. Yes, sir, I certainly agree, sir. She may move on to Congress next, then the Supreme Court, then the Cabinet. And God help us if she ever makes the White House. I couldn't agree more, sir. Stop agreeing. Suggest something. Her father, uh, Randolph O'Hara, was a major contributor to the president's re-election campaign fund. I know that. We can't get to him with money. Well, I was thinking of something else, sir. You get to men like that with honor and prestige. You get them appointed to some high government post. It'll take them out of the country. Say, a foreign ambassador's post. He's a big financier. President of three companies, chairman of two boards. I've got it. We'll appoint him to a foreign ambassador's post. Brilliant idea, sir. How about London? Post is open. Call the White House. Get the State Department. Move! Yes, sir. Did you do it? Yes, so help me, I did it. For national defense and security. For the good of my country. But I'm going to miss my little bunny boo. You can always come to London and see me, pooty poo. How? On what excuse? Start a war with England. Invade. Invade. Why not? London's airport is becoming virtually a who's who of international diplomats and statesmen today, all converging here for the forthcoming world disarmament talks. Ministers from West Germany, Italy and France have already arrived, and other world leaders are expected momentarily. 
including Chen Ying of the Chinese People's Republic. The Chinese diplomat is accompanied by the entire Red Chinese ping pong team, which is here to play an exhibition tournament. But now I see Comrade Shen Ying. And here comes the airliner bringing the Russian delegate, Comrade Krashny, top man in the Soviet Politburo. Comrade Krashny looking as tanned and genial and as dynamic as all his photographs, is the first out of the plane with his young interpreter. And to cap it all, ladies and gentlemen, the new American ambassador, Randolph O'Hara, is just arriving. He's been attending a meeting of foreign diplomats in Geneva. Teakwood. Ambassador O'Hara, on behalf of Her Majesty, welcome to London. I'll drive you to the embassy. Thanks. Uh, my secretary, Miss Carter. Miss Carter? Now, where's that girl? What girl? My daughter. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Oh! <laughs> <Hey>. Oh! <laughs> oh! What a delightful child. Ah. Smashing, what? Here we go again. She's a female liberator, a real smooth operator. As she cruises down the corridors of the state She may look like a desert flower Look out, she'll devour Just anyone who cares to take the bait As long as you're influential You'll find that you're the apple of a pie Though her daddy has tried to scold her And many have tried to hold her She fits and flirts just like a butterfly As your daughter hasn't visited Lada before, I thought we'd take the tourist route. Sure, great. Thank you. That's the famous Thames River, isn't it? Oh, yes. Very large and firm. I mean, yes, quite, absolutely. Water, you know. All water. Oh. That's uh, Buckingham Palace. With no standard flag, Her Majesty's not in residence. It's beautiful. Look! 
Isn't that Trafalgar Square? Won't the statue of Nelson be coming up? Oh, yes. Oh, how right you are. Oh, yes. Up. Teakwood. Oh, he turned out to be a real swinger. Says he's going to have me for tea every day. What did he say instead of tea? I am not going to let you infiltrate the British Parliament. Oh, come on, Father. I've got just as much right to go into government as you. I don't give a damn if you go into government. I just want to keep government out of you. You've got a sex-ridden mind, Father. That's where I get it. You start an international incident. World War Three. From now on, I'm keeping you under lock and key. Oh, brother. You mean from now on I have to come to you and say, um, Daddy, this fellow wants to take me out tonight. Can he borrow the keys to my chastity belt? Don't get smart with me, young woman. I'm taking you out of public circulation. I can do it, you know. You're still 17. A minor. Thanks a lot. After you always wanting to be a big diplomatic wheel, and I fixed it for you. I wanted to get it on merit. You did. On my merit. What's the matter with her? All she thinks about is sex, sex, sex constantly. How did she get that way? Well, I disagree with her. She certainly didn't get it from her father. She's got to be locked up. Put her away. You can't jail your own daughter. No, I was thinking of one of those English finishing schools. I hear they're strictly run and closely watched. Huh. Well, there goes the British educational system. I don't think so, Judith. If she's kept away out in the country with nothing but other girls, kept under a tight thumb, she just might get over it. What she needs is a big dose of culture and refinement. What she needs is a big dose of saltpeter. I'm serious. I've heard of this one school. Whole field house, not far out of London. If I can get her in there, that's where she's going. Quieter. It's one of the finest finishing schools for girls in England. Well, it'll finish me in about one day. Well, this is where you're going. I had to put a lot of strings to get you accepted. They're very selective. You're cruel. They only take girls from the finest families all over the world. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, stop fighting me, buddy. Maybe you'll like it. If I don't, can I come home tomorrow? No way. They're going to make a lady out of you if it kills you. You're going to learn something besides how to unmake a bed. If you know how to do that, you don't have to do anything else. <laughs> and I'm loaded with natural talent. <laughs> Come on. And you've never been enrolled at a private school before, my dear? Uh, no, ma'am. I've never been any place or seen anything or done anything. Surely you've been to public school, dear. I've been getting private lessons for some time now. Your daughter will be in most excellent hands here, I assure you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Miss Grimm. You've put my mind at ease. Now, what is your first name, dear? Bunny. Oh, no, 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 no. That is a small child's nickname. We're all grown-up young ladies here. My name is Bunny. We firmly discourage any and all holdovers from infancy. Security blankets and such things. She hasn't brought any soft, woolly, stuffed animals with her. What? Oh, no, no. She left her teddy bear at home. Good. What is your first name, dear child? Bunny. That's very childish. A bunny is a rabbit. Why should any young lady want to be called a rabbit? Why don't you know, Miss Grimm? It's because I'm Her so... name is Mary Margaret. That's much better. A very nice name. 
Very, Margaret. May I leave her in your hands, Miss Grimm? I do have some urgent business at the embassy. Of course. Harriet, who is my first assistant, will show Mary Margaret to her digs and introduce her to her lovely roommates. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Goodbye, darling. Now, you behave yourself. If you foul up here, the next place may be worse. I'm looking forward to having a real young lady in the family. I hope you find one. Have fun. Be a big, brave girl. After all, you're not being deserted, you know. We are all here to give you care and attention and constant companionship. We'll ease that ache. You just don't know where I ache. Oh. Harriet? Such a dear, sweet, innocent little thing. It's so terribly childish and naive. If you pardon me for saying so, Mr. O'Hara, she's a typical product of your primitive backward country. The states are so bourgeois, so far behind us. The girls mature so much later there. I'll carry a thing, Fed. Cop one more feel and you're dead. What do you mean? I'll spread the word you lousy in the sack. You! Filthy little hypocrite. You really are a degenerate monster. Takes one to know one. Just um, show me to my cell, huh, Butch? Oh, really? This is Mary Margaret O'Hara. This is Selena Barker Jones, Jacqueline Parker, Christine Ashford. There's your bed. That's where you put your things. Now, move in, read the rules. And I don't think you're going to make it. Forget all that formal crap. She's Jackie. She's Sal. And I'm Chris. Welcome to the Siberian salt mines. Thanks. Oh, I'm Bunny. How much do we have to take from the Balsy Drill Sergeant? Oh, Harriet's the gym instructor. Also, Miss Grimm's number one stool pigeon and watchdog. We call her the hairy beast. She actually shaves. Look, <laughs> don't knock it. It's even more revolting with that five o'clock shadow. <laughs> She's a hairy fish. Oh, I think you've got the wrong gender. She's a real bull dyke. What's a bull dyke? Are you putting me on? No, oh, honest. You poor kid. None of you know what I'm talking about, do you? Excuse me. How long have you been in this prison camp? Doesn't take long. They brainwash you in a week. Zap, you're a zombie. So what's a bull dyke? A bull dyke is, well, like when two girls are making it, the bull is the one doing all the work. You mean you've made the scene? Not with dykes. I only make it with men. Men? You mean like plural, lots of men? How many, Bunny? Who counts? Oh, oh, Dan, that's the pool bell. We've got to go, it's a rule. A swim a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> I can use a swim after the trip out here. Do you do this every day? Yes, if the weather's good. What do you do if the weather's not good? Something awful, like mathematics. With the bull dyke? No, she's all brawn, no brain. Well, the pool should be refreshing. It was really hot in the car coming out here. Oh, you must be joking. That water's so warm. There's nothing refreshing in a swim. The hairy beast always watches us, so we never have any peace. We can't do anything. Lead the way. You're not going like that. Why not? What's to be modest about in a house full of females? She's right. Let's all revolt against the Victorian oppression of this nunnery. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Where are your bathing costumes? Miss Grimm! Miss Grimm! Miss Grimm!
isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you know the hairy beast is supposed to get to Miss Grimm? This is just for openers. I'm going to run her hairy legs ragged reporting. <laughs> Fresh air. We were wondering if there were actually any men out there. And if any girls were getting them while well, they were still young enough to enjoy it. <laughs> out in the free world, you can make it any time, any place. 24 hours a day. <laughs> oh, did I miss anything? Seems like you all have missed everything. There must be a man who works around here. Only the gardener, and he's really old and toothless. <laughs> but even he's beginning to appeal to me. Disillusion me. Harry was right. I'm not going to make it here. I think I'll kill myself. Oh. Here, you can borrow this. It's really filthy. I don't need a head trip. I know how you feel. But maybe some of us can get lucky Friday night. How? Why? Where? Do you play basketball? Basketball. We've got a pretty good team. All three of us are on it. Yay, team. No, look, Chris taught Miss Grimm into letting us play a game against Strathmore. And that's a boys' school not far away from here. How old are these guys? About the same age as us. Kids. Some of them are pretty tall. One six six. Six and a half feet of acne. When you've been here as long as we have, you don't care if they've got leprosy. Oh, come on, Bunny. Join the team. Maybe.
prison camp. Slave labor. I've never had such an exciting time before. Maybe we'll all be expelled, but it was worth it. Don't worry. Old Miss Green isn't about to expel 15 girls all at once and go broke. We might even try something else. Count me out if diddling boys is your bag. That's for teeny boppers. I suppose you've got a better idea. You better believe it. Men. Mature men. Big wheels with brains and lots of experience. Wait till you've made that scene. I've had men. How many? Like you, who counts? Yes, we've all had men, isn't that right, Sam? Oh, lots of men. But what can we do about it here? Come on, be honest. None of you would know what to do with a real man. I could swing with any real man you'd care to name. Me too. Like that, any time, any place. Okay, prove it. Let's make a bet. Get on with your studies. We're just discussing domestic and world affairs. Huh. These affairs will rock the world. Okay, now what's the plan? Here are several issues of The Sun from different days this week. I didn't look at them, but on the front page of each is a special section called International Newsmakers. I know, it always features some big wheel who lives in London or who's visiting the city. Right. Now we each pick a paper, face down, sight on scene. Whichever man you draw, that's the one you have to get in the sack. Insanity. Those men are world famous. You're not going to cut out on me now, are you? Afraid you can't do it? Not me. I'll go first. Comrade Krashnev, the big wheel in the Soviet Politburo. I hear he goes for jazzy cars and sailing around the Black Sea. A real swinger. Should be a pushover, if that's not all propaganda. But where's he staying in London? How do I find him? Probably the Russian embassy. It also says here he's invited to supper at the foreign minister's house. He shouldn't be too difficult to find. Very funny. <laughs> Try your luck, Chris. How about you? No, I'll go last. That way you can't say I had an easy one all picked out. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, a Chinaman! I could get luckier than that with a fortune cookie. Well, he is young and athletic looking. And he is the star of the Red Chinese ping pong team. The communist team is in London for one week of exhibition matches. Wang Lo is captain. Go ahead, Sal. Far out. Now he's a real swinger. Dr. Wolfgang Meyer. Foreign affairs expert from America. And international playboy. The world's number one jet setter. But he has girls standing in line. So now you can prove how good you are. He's in London for those world disarmament meetings. And he's staying at the embassy house with my father. I'll trade you. No. Too easy. First rule of the game? Play it as it lays. Wow. If you can sack him, I'll say you're the greatest since Cleopatra. Impossible. He's never alone. Where could the two of you go? There must be a spare room somewhere in Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle. <laughs> Mother! Come on, it's hot today. You'll never come back here when I'm talking to you. Young ladies! <whistles> Girls! All right, we go tonight. The first one to make it with her man wins. How do we know she makes it? We've got to have evidence, some kind of proof. Candid photographs? How do you take a photo of yourself while you're working? Ducky. What? Ducky, Charlotte Webfoot. She's dying to be a press photographer someday. There she is. Can we trust her? Completely. And she doesn't have to know everything until the final moment of truth. Okay. See if you can get her, Chris. Right. But what about the hairy bees? Because she makes room inspections all night long. And how do we get to London if we do get out? None of us have cars. 
Harriet has, we can combine the two problems. You mean take the hairy beast with us? No. Get one of the girls to put out for her all night while we steal her car. Ugh, who'd go with the hairy beast? Agnes Crutcher. Well, why Agnes? She's pretty and the beast draws over her all the time. Think Agnes will do it? Her allowance is always late and always short. She'll do anything for money. Try her. Offer her 20 pounds more if you have to. Hi, Celine. Hi. Agnes, what would you do for 20 pounds? Oh, arson, treason, murder. What had you in mind? Do you make it with Harriet all night? Oh, I've got some pride and self-respect. You won't do it. The hairy beast? All night? How about 30 pounds? Okay. There goes the last of my self-respect. Oh my God. Oh, we might as well forget it. What do you mean? Go back when everything's going so well. Chickening out? No chance. But we're all in such a rush to get going, we forgot the most important detail. What's that? That is, finding a place to leave from and report back to. You mean a kind of headquarters? Yeah, that's it. I guess it's all over. No. Oh, you poor, inexperienced bunch of kids. No imagination, no organization. What you need is a little American know-how. You mean you thought about it? I did something about it. I found us the perfect place. The Dorchester? Oh, the boy. The Hilton? The Ritz? Well, not exactly. That's our headquarters? It's a small hotel. Bigger ones can be nosy. Now look, we'll all take taxis and we'll leave the car right here for you, Ducky. I object. We're the ones who have to get around. We can't all go in the same car and Ducky's got to be able to move fast when we need her. Well, let's get her set so I can find my Chinaman and start calling. <laughs> <laughs> now don't forget, the winner's got to get her man in bed and she's got to score. What else could happen? Well, we're not going to sleep with them. That's just an expression. Well, some men swing crazy, like the Chinaman may get his kicks out of having Chris beat him with a bag of fried rice or something. Now you sit right here so you can hear the clerk page you. Don't move. Don't leave for a minute. What if I have to go potty? Real press photographers never go potty. It'll be good training for you. You're too important right here, Ducky. Just wait and come with your camera when you get the call. Let's go. All right. Okay. <laughs> I 
didn't know men had such funny hang-ups. There's a lot of real weirdos. Some only dig fighting rear guard action. They don't want to be moved to the front. Oh, probably my Russian is so backward. <laughs> it takes a real artist to make that kind do a good old-fashioned bounce. And that's our bet. Nothing else counts. Taxi! Bye. Bye. Oh, Sal, I don't want to do it. Neither do I. From the Times. Telegraph. Your lovely mirror. Your lovely mirror, man. I'll see you there, Glow, and the world around the world. Line them up for the picture. Where are you going? Oh, there you go. Mr. Wang, I've been dying to meet you. I'd like to ask you some questions. Is it true the Chinese invented the game of ping pong? Thank you. They say it started when two Chinamen tried to pass a hard-boiled egg with chopsticks. Is that so? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, we do. Is it coincidence you're here at all the conventions? Oh, purely coincidental. Is it true that you practice seven days a week? What I really want is a private interview. How about your hotel room? Just the two of us. We can be so much more closely attuned in bed. <laughs> thank you, thank you. No, thank you. I'll wait while you shower and change, and then we'll go straight away. Okay? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Does the team playing English thank cricket you. at all? No. Listen, gentlemen, that's all for now. There's what you shower and change. We have scheduled a press conference for the hotel tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 Webfoot, please. Uh, Miss Webfoot? Telephone. Hello? Hello, Ducky. It's Chris. I'm at the sports stadium. I've got the Chinaman. Get you as quickly as you can. Got it. The sports stadium. Be right there. Thanks for paging me. My pleasure. Hey, you was uh, speaking to the sports stadium, I believe. Yes. You know, the uh, ping pong match, eh? Yeah. How does it stand? She hasn't scored yet. Oh, okay. Here I am. Follow us. Wait till you're certain we're making it, but be alert. I have a notion Orientals are on and off in a wink, like roosters. Be ready to snap a shot at any moment. Mad. I think he wants to do it in the shower room. Ugh, how awful. It's steaming. How can he enjoy it? Well, if that's what he fancies, we'll steam it up a bit more. Now, stay close. Glance in the door soon. Get that photo.
，你们快点，开人嘛，叫人嘛！妈，你在叫叫是不是？快上来了嘛，他就叫叫我试试啊！老人是养来的。the American ambassador. Look, I know I should have called first, but I just happened to be in the neighborhood, so... Hmm. You want some identification? How about bribes? Take bribes? I think your buddy's deaf. Listen, I only want to go in for a minute. I'd really like to tell you all about it, but, well, it's sort of a state secret. Okay, I'm going to lay it on you straight. It's like I got a date to make it in the castle, you know? A little undercover business, Dick. <laughs> it's very important. I've got to get laid. But, um, that limousine, it wouldn't happen to belong to Conwood Krasnev, would it? Well, it just happens to, miss. Oh, gosh, can I touch it, please? Well, you can kiss it if you like. He does. It's his favourite next to his Jaguar, Mercedes, Lincoln Continental. He can't wait to visit Tokyo and order his new Datsun 240. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Let's go, get going. The Soviet embassy. What are you doing here? Huh? What did he say? I am dreaming, but what are you doing here? Thanks, but what did he say? He said, I am dreaming, but I ask you, what are you doing here? I hope you won't be angry. I just had to meet you. Pravilno, What are you saying? He said, I am dreaming. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know she was near. I'll get her out. Ничего, ничего. Закрывайте окно. Shut the window. Как ваша фамилия? Маленький базар. Comrade Krasnev asks you, what is your name, my little baggage? My little what? My little baggage. Oh. Jackie. I've always admired you. 
Jackie, then you see a doubt in Ravelis. Tarsh! Aha! They at Secret Service. He says you are from the Secret Service. No! But I would like to give you a little service secretly. Vy chcete děnky, do? Kapitalistické hippie. He says, then you want money. You are capitalistic hippie. Tell him that I am just a simple girl who thinks Comrade Krashnev is the greatest statesman Russia has ever had, and that I'd like just one thing from him, something I'd remember all my life. Ana Skazala. Что она только простая девушка, которая думает, что вы очень замечательный чиновник Советского Союза. И она хочет что-то нибудь маленького, чтобы помнить всей ее жизни. И что это такое? Что это такое, моя вишница? What is it you'd like, my little cherry? That once, just once, Comrade Krashnev were my lover. You are mad! How dare you even to suggest this? You, you must be mad. Do you know who he is? Ну скажите, что она сказала? Ну конечно, я вам покажу, что русский мужик может делать. You will have your wish. Every Russian can swing with the best of the best. <laughs> Если вы скажите что-нибудь, кто-нибудь, и вы будете переводчик для Медиви Сибир. Ой, what's he saying? He said, if I breathe one word of this, I'll be translating for the bears in Siberia for the rest of my life. И теперь мы поедем в советском посольстве. И потом мы поедем симпатично. Гостиницу доктор Мейер рекомендовал. He said, now we are going to the Soviet embassy to pick up some baggage, and after that to a very pleasant hotel, which was recommended to him by Dr. Mayer. Dr. Mayer? Oh no. But she knew, oh no. Oh, Miss Webfoot, telephone for you again. Hello? Oh, Ducky? Oh, hi, Jackie. Look, I've got Krasnov ready. You sure? We've just been on one wild goose chase. I'm positive, Ducky, but Harry is a real swinger. We're at the Greyfield Hotel. Oh, wow, I'll be right there. Back to the stadium again? No, it's all over there. Hey, what was the final score? Who can count that high? Comrade Krasnev wishes me to help him. Interpret. We're not going to talk. In Russia, we don't argue with our leaders. Oh. Thank you. Hey, let's go, shut up, my dear. Hey, let's go, shut up. Do you think I'm weak? My sweetheart. Oh, stop it! Get out of here! 
Ты что, не вот этот скандал? Злая душа, кровать! Лучше день, как это товарищ, товарищ! Невозможно, ну, но и юга, я как музыка, не надо. Иди, ну, делайте что-нибудь! Как вы сказали, как вы прикозеваете? Are you having trouble too? I missed my chance at Windsor. What happened? Did you get close? While I was doing <clears throat> sentry duty, the royal car drove out and I missed him. Now he's attending a concert at Albert Hall. It's awfully hard to score in there, isn't it? Mm, it's impossible. You can't even buy a ticket. Now I've got to wait till he gets home again. I thought I had my soft station at the right place to bump into Maya when he came to the disarmament meeting. And he went somewhere else? To another meeting at your house. Well, we might as well give up anyway. Why? The night's still young. Ducky's not here. Oh, that's right. I didn't think. That means that Chris or Jackie must have called. One of them is making it right now and we lose. Maybe not. Look. False alarm? Two of them. First Chris and a bunch of crazy Chinamen, all the wrong ones. Her prize got away while she was bringing joy to the rest of the team. Poor Chris. Poor? She got more action than I'll get if I live to be 90. Did Jackie call too? She's in bed with Krasniff, all right. But these Russians have a peculiar way of making love. She hasn't scored yet. Not in the way it counts. Then we still have a chance to win, Bunny. I hope somebody does pretty soon. I can't watch much more of this. Every time my flash goes off, so do I. I'll get a winner for you, Ducky. I know it's cheating a little, but could you just get me inside your house? Why? Nobody's helping me get in Windsor Castle. Oh, please. You can do it easy. It'll only take a few minutes. Just get me inside and I'll do the rest. Okay. I can spot you a head start and still win. Thanks. We'll have to sneak in, though. I don't want my father to see me or it'll blow the whole evening. I don't want him to see me either. Just talk to Maya. Oh, don't worry. Meyer's radar picks up anything within <laughs> ten miles. <laughs> Do you think that guard at the gate will call the house and tell your father you're at home? Why? He figures my father will see that I'm at home. Guess so. Now what? They're meeting in the drawing room. What the hell is keeping that Chinese delicate? He'll be here. These meetings are as important to them as they are to us. Pardon me, Dr. Mayor, but it's an atrocious hour to transact important matters. If you could arrange it for the morning, then perhaps... No, no, Lord Teakwood. We must meet with all the delegates in the daytime. You see, the international talks are merely a front, a facade. Well, we arrange them as a cover story to conceal our real purpose for coming together in London to hold the secret arms limitation talks with some of our close friends. And secret affairs can be kept secret better at night. Most of your nighttime affairs are rather an open secret, Doctor. The one appearing with you in this morning's paper was stunning. She's a secret agent. Took all night, but she cracked. I got a lot out of her. Yes, I dare say. Heavy meeting. Secretary Beard is here from Washington. I recognize Dr. Meyer. He's cute. Who was the stuffy British fellow? Lord Teakwood. He's not so stuffy. I've had him. Really, Bunny? The other one's dear father. You can have him. What will I do? That meeting may go on all night. None of them can go on all night, except maybe Meyer. I know the room they've put him in. You better wait there. Wait in his bedroom. Relax, Sal. He moves fast. One minute in Washington, the next in Russia, the next in some Paris bistro, the next in some Hollywood nightclub. He hates to waste time, and you'll save him a lot of time. 
That fellow isn't coming. I'm telling you, the Chinese are holding their own secret talks with the Russians. I can counter that tactic quickly. Announce to the press that we made overtures and that they refuse to talk. Okay, I'll have do it, will you? First thing in the morning. I'll call the chief. We want top clearance for that. Put me through to Washington, please. The chief. And put this through on the private line as soon as you've got him. Where's the private Washington line? Oh, in the library. Hello, sir. It's good to hear your voice, sir. I know it's still the afternoon there, and I hate to break in on your busy schedule, but you were looking at the Miami Dolphin game. I'm sorry, that is important. But what's the score? They haven't scored yet. Didn't they use that play you sent them? Oh, they lost 10 yards. Hmm. I don't blame you. With all the things you've got on your mind, you certainly didn't need an additional crisis like that. Hi. Well, sir, I thought for a little while we'd be in a little trouble here, but I'm beginning to see a faint glimmer of hope. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, in fact, things are looking much, much brighter. <laughs> uh, yes, I can handle it. I, I know I can handle it. If you were here, sir, you could see that I am handling it, in fact. Mm. No, I don't believe there is any need for your presence here at the moment. Uh, not a thing you could do except stand by and watch. Very frustrating for you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I've had a lot of experience in these things. Mm. <laughs> well, they just come naturally to me. Yeah. Uh, just like your football genius is natural to you. Yes, yes, you are, sir. You're greater than Rock the Lombardi, Pop Warner. Hmm? Why, yes, I, I think I can put that into my press release tomorrow. Sure. <laughs> of course, I'd be delighted to hear that statement. Yes, please read it. He's been on that phone for hours. You think he's gotten through? Oh, he always gets through. They have a very special relationship. Yes, I know, Beard, I know. I better go in and see if he's having any trouble. Well, I, uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you, O'Hara. He doesn't like to be interfered with when he's talking with number one. Well, it's sure taken him a long time. A damn nuisance. I beg your pardon, sir? Oh, no, that was just a reaction of extreme pleasure. I thought you phrased that last part beautifully. Yes, I'm getting quite a bang out of it. Just being on the other end of the line while you're talking, sir, is the greatest experience you can imagine. Yes, yes, I understand. Get back to your game, sir. We'll talk tomorrow after the meeting. Goodbye, sir. Peace. What a shame I didn't draw you. I'd be a big winner right now. You didn't enjoy it? Oh, yes. It's just that you're the wrong one. You don't count. I don't understand. I hope we can continue this later. Oh, I'd really love to. But I've got to get going. The other girls are probably about to beat me right now. Beat you? What have you got to do so urgently? I've got to get laid.
Bon, tavarish, 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 b
perhaps if Dr. Mayer has retired... No, 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 this is important. He never sleeps. He said if you showed up, to come straight in. Oh. Doctor, Mr. Xinyang, the Chinese delegate is here. Doctor. Most fortuitous, Comrade Ying. It could not have been better staged if we had planned it. <laughs> A most embarrassing moment for Dr. Mayer. To think they would play into our hands like this. Things had been going badly at the world disarmament talks. Is that not so? Very badly for us, Comrade Chen. And now we have this delicious scandal. Disgustingly immoral. A personal representative of the American president assaulting a mere girl, a child, a baby. <laughs> Degenerate capitalists. Hypocrites. They talk of our terrible overpopulation, but they speak about secretly populating the world. We must lose no time in turning this piece of good fortune to our advantage. Photograph, please, comrade. A photograph, comrade? Yes, yes. You mentioned another young girl who photographed the incriminating scene. Yes, that is so. Surely you took the film from her immediately. There was a great flash of light. It blinded me for a moment. Then much excitement followed. People shouting and running. The and... girl with the camera, Xian Yin. She ran out of the room. You fool! She was hysterical. Mad. It was all so confusing. <laughs> she may still be running. And when the chairman hears this, you may still be running. When the great Gobi Desert of Mongolia has turned to poppy fields. Get your best men. Find her at once. has done a most excellent job. I have vanished from the picture as though I had never been there. Such a warm, personal, intimate gathering. <laughs> there are so many possibilities. One hardly knows how to approach it. Secretary Baird, mm -hmm. an ambassador horror for the Americans, mm -hmm. and Lord Teakwood for the British. Mm -hmm. All carelessly watching the rape of a poor, helpless child by the special aid <laughs> to the United States President. It has a staggering potential. If only we wish to start a war. But we are talking of reducing armaments. Yes, we must be mm. discreet and diplomatic. Nevertheless, we can now exert enormous pressure in our world disarmament talks. This will bring Dr. Meyer quickly to his knees. He is already on his knees. Send copies of this photograph to both the Americans and the British. Include a carefully worded memorandum. Say we are prepared to be most discreet if things go more smoothly at the next secret meeting. Very well, Comrade Chan. Then call Peking. Get me the chairman, quickly.
This is the final cotton picking straw. It's shocking. Incredible. Where was your mind, Dr. Mayer? I'd say Dr. Mayer's mind was on his work, and rather happily so. You can be amused, Lord Teakwood. This is an American problem. It's a universal problem, I fear. If only your police had got that damn girl before she lost her camera. She's rather good at candid photos, isn't she? Too damn good. It's a remarkable likeness of the three of us. Notice how she captured us just above the good doctor's doubt. Brilliant timing, actually. A moment later, he might have been on the rise. We'd have been completely obscured. I consider that poor humor. No humor intended, old chap. I truly admire that picture. You know, the Chinese are clever. They've managed to get Ying right out of the picture. That's really playing dirty. I say, would you mind if I had a wallet-sized print made up? Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I really must get back to the Foreign Office. I'll be in touch. Chinese memo that came with that photograph is pure blackmail. We certainly can't go ahead with the secret disarmament negotiations now. We'd be at their mercy. Ah, what could they do with that photo, really? Destroy international image? To say nothing of our image at home. You and I, O'Hara, will end up as clerks for the Internal Revenue, and you, Dr. Mayer, will be deported. A sorry thing for the United States. Do you realize if anything happened to me, that man in the White House would really be president? Hey, public reaction might be so bad. I mean, that girl, Selena, what's her name? She's Anglo-Indian, isn't she? Now, people understand about Indian girls. What do they understand? You know. At home, they're so overprotected that when they get out, they're, uh, they're oversexed. <laughs> oh, Hara, there were three girls involved in this massive international sex plot, or whatever it was, and one of them just happens to be your daughter. Yeah, I know. Teak has got the special branch out now, rounding him up. I bet they haven't done anything like that. Better pray they didn't. As I understand it, it was uh, your oversexed little kindergarten kid who had her eye on Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle. <laughs> Pretty soon, chum. I shall be too tired to care. created a terrible international crisis. You have completely destroyed secret negotiations that were going on between several world powers. And you may have severely endangered our chance for a real world peace. We just wanted to help international relations. The worst of all was that, was that photograph. Why would you take a picture of a great man in such a compromising way? For the same reason he posed for it. Don't get flip with me, young woman. I snapped lots of big men the same way. Most of them were much more interesting than that one of Dr. Meyer. What other men? Well, there was me with Comrade Krashnev. Krashnev? And me with half the Red Chinese ping pong team. You have a pornographic picture of the Chinese? Well, I snapped it. I don't know what I got, but it ought to be pretty weird. Yes. 
But the film, it was in your camera when you lost it, huh? No, I changed film for each assignment. Young lady, you may have put world peace back on the right track. Tenders, fools, running dogs, and imbeciles, not even one week away from your homeland. And you sink to the degenerate level of the dirty capitalists. If I may speak, Comrade Chen. You may not speak, Shen Yin. Your face appears in this revolting spectacle also. I was not actively engaged. No matter. It will suit the Americans' purpose just as well. This creates an impasse, a stalemate. What good is our photograph of the American presidential aid now? There will be hard days ahead for all of you when you return to Peking. Under! Shen Ying speaking. Ah, Lord Tikun. So good of you to call. Yes, we received a photograph. <laughs> Most amusing. It adds a little humor to our grim work to exchange small jokes this way. Isn't that so? Oh, of course. Now that we have both enjoyed a chuckle, we will destroy our negatives, as I'm sure the Americans will destroy theirs. Yes. <laughs> Very well. I agree. Going home? Yes. We were speaking of that very thing as you called. The ping pong team will be leaving at once. Myself. Yes, yes, I will accompany them. And Comrade Shan also. Yes, <laughs> Comrade Shan has his bags all packed. <laughs> we will miss our private chats with you and Americans. Oh. They are flying home at once also. <laughs> yes. A cooling off period. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Your Lordship. Goodbye. Well, it's all settled. They'll destroy their negative, as I promised you chaps would. Which, of course, neither of us will do. They're getting out of the country. Just as I promised you chaps would. Now, just a minute, just a minute. We've got other business here besides these world disarmament talks. Uh, that was mainly a ploy, a cover-up for the secret negotiations. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'm merely conveying the cordial farewell and bon voyage of the Prime Minister. Why should the Prime Minister give the boot to Secretary Beard and Dr. Mayer? I'm afraid the boot is aimed more directly at you, Ambassador. Huh? Your daughter was the instigator of this scandalous affair that nearly brought on a global conflict. And you will remember, one of the men marked down for seduction by the girls was a guest at the Foreign Minister's residence. We can't stand any more scams at this time than you people. You mean I'm getting the heave-ho? Well, that's rather an indelicate way of putting it. The Prime Minister has contacted your president. You're merely being shifted, oh, still ambassador, to a more glamorous but more distant post. The big news story of the moment contains some mysterious undertones and rather dire implications. There has been a sudden and unexplained mass exodus of very important men out of London. The airport was teeming this morning with world-famous personalities. The Red Chinese have cancelled all further ping-pong exhibitions, and the entire team embarked this morning for Peking, along with Shen Ying and Chai and Chu, top-ranking Chinese officials. Special presidential aide, Dr. Wolfgang Meyer, has suddenly been recalled to Washington, as has Secretary Beard. And Soviet statesman Krashnev, boarding a plane for Moscow this morning, said he was abandoning all hopes of a world peace. His exact and bewildering statement to the press was that he does not expect to find another peace in his lifetime. Observer state, he appeared to be a basket case. And to cap it all, reliable information has just been handed us 
that American Ambassador Randolph O'Hara has been transferred to Afghanistan. Afghanistan? I need a drink. I think it sounds exotic. It's in Africa, isn't it? No. Well, where is it? Nobody knows. Don't be so grumpy, Father. I'm not complaining because I had to leave that swell school you sent me to. Neither is that swell school. Well, if you don't like where they're sending you, why don't you go back to being a big Wall Street tycoon? Because I gave up three presidencies and the chairmanship of two boards to go into government. It's not that easy to go back, especially in disgrace. Afghanistan. Try it. You'll like it. Like it? I can't even spell it. You little sex fiend. Your hot pants bounced me clear up to London. Now they've bounced me almost down to oblivion. I was about to crash Windsor Castle when your friends loused me up. I might have bounced you all the way up to being the first American Prime Minister of Great Britain. Goodbye, Roy. Thank you very much. All right, young lady. Say your goodbyes. Just because I have to leave, I hope you're not going to give up. You know how important extracurricular activity is. Don't worry. You made us appreciate the value of higher education. We'll keep right on with the thrilling program you started. We're going to read the papers and get some new ideas about world affairs. And then we'll write you in Afghanistan and let you know who wins the highest honor. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. But always remember what Miss Grimm says. Winning isn't important. It's how you play the game. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get on the plane now, Bunny. I'll be right along. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Bunny. Bye. 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 Now, don't forget, Judith, when you follow next week, be sure to see ah, the office. Ambassador um, O'Hara. I'm so pleased we're on the same flight, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Quite a coincidence. Nice to see you. Now, as I was saying, be sure to see that the, the office files are on their way to Kabul and not hung up in some London freight dock. Bye. something before that little nympho screws you all the way to outer mongolia don't worry she may be rubbing knees in the air for a few hours with that hindu faker but the minute she steps off the plane i'm shipping her to a to a nunnery in the himalayas my god didn't you recognize him that hindu faker is the president of afghanistan no oh no oh no